Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to yet another edition of Late Night Reviews with Jean <laughs> where I film a review in the middle of the night for no apparent reason other than work and so I have to be as quiet as possible during this review so as to not wake anyone up but yes, I just saw episode 3 of Loki so let's talk about it. So like I said, it is quite late, like it's literally in the middle of the night, like this is a very, very bad time to be filming, but I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible. And so right up front, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be told when I upload next. And also just to let you guys know that from here on out, I am going to be looking out for some of your comments, some of your references, some of your theories regarding this series. You can drop them down in the comments below and I will be featuring them in future reviews of these episodes so I'm really excited to hear what you guys have to say and I'll be featuring your comment in the next video if I get a chance to see them so drop them down below and let me know what your thoughts are but without further ado let's get into my review of Loki. So first off we start off the episode by seeing exactly how Sylvie as we now know her as was able to get into the mind of Hunter C20. I believe I referred to her as like B9 90 something else <laughs> in last week's review but you know her real name is Hunter C20 and here we have this scene where Sylvie is kind of hanging out with her at this bar or restaurant and she's trying to pry out some information out of her and initially she doesn't quite realize that this is like a, a weird scenario that she's existing in she's enjoying her margarita <laughs> she's having a fun time at this bar she's listening to the music but all of a sudden when Sylvie tries to ask her some more interrogative questions about the timekeepers and the security measures put in place in the TVA in order to protect them that's when Hunter C20's ears start to perk up and she's like hang on like hmm, why are you asking me these questions what's going on so Sylvie has to work really hard to reassure her that they're friends that they've known each other for an undisclosed <laughs> but very long amount of time and there's nothing to worry about she can talk to her she can trust her but it doesn't quite work for a second there until she's able to break through those barriers and at that point we return back to the scene that we saw in last week's episode where we saw Sylvie spot Loki and the TVA on the screens that she had there and she quickly had to abandon Hunter C20 and make her escape from there. So that scene kind of served its purpose in order to establish how Sylvie uses her mind control powers, how she is able to seep into people's consciousness and she does point out later on in the episode that with certain strong minds it does take more for her to kind of create a whole world that they would be more familiar with that they would feel more comfortable in and therefore gain a lot of trust in her so that she can kind of take control of their minds whilst at the same time they're still operating in them there is a big revelation that comes much later on in the episode and that is of course that the members of the TVA the TVA staff okay that we were told were created by the timekeepers well it turns out that they were ordinary people who had lived their ordinary lives at some point in time but they had either been you know reset or kidnapped by the TVA something along those lines and they ended up having to work for the TVA against their will this is fascinating to me <laughs> this is fascinating to me because did we not just watch WandaVision did we not just like am I the only one getting strong one division vibes I find it fascinating how these Disney plus series have themes that are kind of overlapping here especially Loki and one division because isn't this exactly what Wanda did to that whole town of Westview <laughs> exactly except this time around for her she just wanted them to play roles in her fantasy dreamland whereas in the case of the TVA they've been employed <laughs> they've been employed to secure the sacred timeline so that's a very interesting parallel there and again you can also see parallels between Wanda and Sylvie's powers as well as one of you guys mentioned um, in the comments of my last video where I um, talked about how I couldn't quite remember who has similar powers to Sylvie I still can't remember 
about who exactly had the exact same powers i'm thinking of something else but <laughs> but it is true that wanda does have very similar powers within the mcu so i find it interesting that we're seeing more and more parallels between the two shows there as well so as soon as sylvie sees loki and the tva on her security cameras we get that title sequence and it's this kind of funky song i believe it's called demon um by an artist i'll put her name right over here i can't remember her name at the moment but first of all that song is catchy as hell that song is catchy as hell <laughs> loved it been listening to it all day secondly <laughs> secondly it is a nice reference to of course loki and all of the loki's being referred to as demons and devils we hear that reference once again later on in the episode by that woman who's stranded um in that planet and she refers to them as devils perhaps as a nod to loki's classic helmet with the horns so then next up the first scene that we get in the actual episode is sylvie arriving at the opposite side of the portal that she went through in the previous episode and we find out that she has landed herself right back in the tva <laughs> she's gotten herself in the tva once again and you know a part of me feels like <laughs> having the character go back in the tva is basically a cheap way to do things okay i personally feel like you know they wanted to keep the budget mm, kind of contained so they were like let's just use these same sets as much as possible so she's just gonna go back to the tva and try and hunt down the timekeepers we do see that it's likely that this is the first time she went to the tva because she doesn't understand how her powers aren't able to function in the tva she's surprised by the fact that she's not able to enchant someone initially and she has to resort to using her action skills <laughs> her fighting skills and listen i said in last week's review that i had some thoughts about the action sequences that we've been getting in this series i felt like they were a little lackluster i felt like they, the choreography wasn't giving what it was supposed to be giving and i also didn't like the fact that loki was using his powers in trivial ways but so like two things here first of all when it comes to the action sequences i do think there was a and a marked improvement in this week's episode i still wouldn't say it's to the level of some of the best action sequences that we've gotten in the mcu at large but it's been pretty good like it was a much better performance in that front in comparison to last week's episode secondly when it comes to loki's powers um it's a bit of a mixed bag to me. I feel like there are a few inconsistencies when it comes to how Loki uses his magic. There are occasions where it is very trivial, it is very kind of a jokey use of magic that we see from him. Like the fireworks, there are a nod to his mother and how she taught him how to use magic. Um, but then also at the end of the episode, which we'll talk about a little bit more, I guess now we might as well talk about it now. <laughs> but at the end of the episode, he lifts like a whole building. <laughs> at the end of the episode, he manages to either lift a building or reverse time to where the building is back intact where it was either way huge difference <laughs> huge difference in how he's able to use his powers and on the one hand i am happy to see loki use his magic like the powerful god that he is and that is something that i mentioned in last week's review where i felt like the show wasn't giving me enough of powerful loki like this is a god this is a norse god he thinks everyone should bow down to him for a reason so i wanted to see more of that and i'm glad that we got that at the end of the episode specifically but at the same time it does leave questions <laughs> like it opens up questions like you know why didn't he do this then why didn't he do this then and not just you know outside of this series because we could talk about the appearances that he's had in other films um and how he didn't use certain powers that he displayed in this episode in those circumstances and we can talk about that but at the same time just within this episode itself there are a lot of inconsistencies like how how is he able to be pushed through a train window like if you're able to lift a building <laughs> I guess the excuse is because he was drunk which by the way very much gave me WandaVision vibes again except in that series it was Vision who ended up having gum his gummed up cogs I think it was a reference to but yeah he was also acting real drunk in that episode I believe it was episode two of WandaVision my point is is that the use of powers and the use of magic that Loki has here is slightly inconsistent there are times when he does seem quite OP but then there are also times when he just feels like like, yeah.
yeah, he just feels like a magician, <laughs> like an actual magician. He's not supposed to be a magician. He's supposed to be like a sorcerer or someone who's almost at that level. I mean, he was about to uh, fight against Doctor Strange in Thor Ragnarok. Let's not forget, like he was going to challenge Doctor Strange. He wouldn't have done that if all he had up his sleeve were fireworks. So anyways, back to the first scene. <laughs> Sylvie is making her way through the hallways of the TVA and because she got that information from Hunter C20 about the golden uh, elevator doors, she is making her way there expecting to get to the timekeepers through that elevator. But of course she is stopped by Judge Renslayer and we get that action scene or the action moments from the trailers. Can't help but notice that a lot of these action moments from the trailers don't really manifest into big action sequences. I'm hoping that all of that will kind of resume once they return to the TVA after getting off of this planet. But still, like if that is the entirety of the action sequence that we were promised in the trailers, I feel a little bit cheated, not gonna lie. But anyways, we do see shortly after Sylvia arrives at the TVA that Loki follows after her. And in last week's episode, again, I hate to like nitpick, but in last week's episode, I did say that because the portal was open for so long, I expected that Sylvie had actually expected Loki to follow her and it was all part of her plan. But in reality, she was surprised to see him. So I'm like, why was the portal open for so long? <laughs> why was it like, that was conveniently open for ages, long enough for Loki to look back and forth between Mobius and the portal and then make his decision to go through. That was a little convenient to me, but whatever. Anyways, <laughs> especially because none of the other portals end up staying open for that long either. Like if you look at the other portals that come up, uh, throughout the episode none of them are open for as long as that portal was at the end of the previous episode but I digress so they end up having this confrontation where she's like why are you here or are you bored and Loki's like this is so you know rude and blah 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 they have that little banter moment I wouldn't say it's the strongest banter that I've seen with Loki I would much prefer the banter that he has with Mobius or of course so then they have their confrontation but Judge Renslayer of course interrupts them and Sylvie threatens to kill Loki in exchange for being let go and Judge Renslayer is like okay <laughs> she's like oh you thought you really did something with that like I don't care. <laughs> Sylvie and Loki end up falling through a portal onto this planet called Lamentus One. Now this is a very interesting setting, a very interesting episode overall. I did not think that the entire episode would be taking place on this purple planet. <laughs> I thought it would be just a pit stop. Okay, I was surprised to see the minutes going and seeing that purple hue lingering. Um, but we were here for the whole episode and it looks like it's going to be carrying on into next episode. And basically what we have here is a typical, um, a lot of people have referred to it as a Doctor Who storyline, which makes sense to me. I've never actually watched Doctor Who, but of course there are some parallels to be made there. Of course, Doctor Who is the Time Lord. And actually, I was listening to the Loki theme all week, <laughs> like all week on repeat because it's an excellent theme. But anyways, I was listening to the Loki theme and I did recognize some Whoisms, some kind of homages to the Doctor Who theme in that theme. So I find that very interesting as well. But this whole episode very much had echoes of Doctor Who as well as some other series like The Mandalorian and Snowpiercer. We'll get to it, okay? We'll get to it. I already predicted this last week, but we'll get to it. So anyways, they end up on this planet for far longer than I thought they would. And it's all because of this kind of quirky setup where they have the temp pad that Loki used in order to form the portal in the first place. But it turns out that it's out of battery. <laughs> and so they have to go on this mission to find a USB charger. <laughs> like it, it's really cute okay it's kind of simple we've seen this kind of storyline before time and time again Sylvie is eager to get back to her uh, mission she's eager to get back to the mission that she's been working towards for years apparently and so she's not going to let Loki uh, stand in her way and they have this kind of tussle about and it's you know cute Loki is able to use his powers this time around which is a welcome surprise um, but at the same time I personally didn't feel like there were a lot of stakes there because we know that they're not going to kill each other. 
<laughs> we know they're not going to end up dead in episode three, surely. So I don't feel like the stakes were that high. It was just nice to see them using their powers and using their skills against each other. But of course, they have to band together in order to find this USB charger so that they can get back to the TVA and get back to what they were doing. So they make a couple of stops along the way and we do learn a few things about the characters as they go. We learn that Sylvie refers to herself as Sylvie because she has rejected the Loki name. Now, this is an interesting topic <laughs> because a lot of people have speculated that Sylvie or Lady Loki was actually Enchantress. And this is another character from the comics. Um, she's a completely different character. So it's interesting to see if she will end up being Enchantress in this series um, or if she's just going down a completely different route. It might be a hybrid of the two. I wouldn't be surprised if Marvel did that. But here, it definitely seems like Sylvie is a female version of Loki from an alternate reality. Um, she's just rejected the name Loki for whatever reason due to her past traumas, which we don't learn about in this episode. I, I fully thought that we were going to be learning about her backstory in this episode. As I said last week, I don't know why we didn't. Maybe that's coming in next week's episode, but I'm a little worried now because <laughs> this is only a six episode series. Like, why are we dragging things along like this? This is not the type of thing that we needed to be dragging. But anyways, we do learn some things about her, like I said, and they do make a couple of stops along the way to the train that will get them to the arc. So first off, they do have this very Mandalorian-esque stop at the shooter's house and she is kind of armed with this massive weapon. <laughs> this massive weapon. Um, and she kind of threatens them. And, you know, first time around, Sylvie tries to be direct, but then Loki is like, you need to use your diplomacy. And so he tries to emotionally manipulate the woman by disguising himself as her husband. And the woman's like, that's not my husband he was way meaner than that so she also shoots him <laughs> so they both fail and of course eventually they learn that they have to work together in order to get anywhere but anyway she is able to inform them about this train that will get them to I think the arc that would eventually get them off planet now ultimately Sylvie already knows that this planet is doomed because it's the apocalypse and so either way everyone is going to get wiped out but if there is something that they can change that they're going to try and do so especially because this arc may have enough power for them to use the tempack. So they get to the train and here we have the Snowpiercer moment. I just want to ruminate on this for a second because it's crazy how last week I mentioned that there were a few parallels between Snowpiercer and Loki very much through the character of Judge Renslayer that I couldn't help but notice. I mentioned this to you guys where I talked about how Judge Renslayer very much reminded me of uh, Jennifer Connelly's character in Snowpiercer piercer the series and um, there isn't really an equivalent character in the film but either way I very much feel like this episode episode three explored similar themes that Snowpiercer both the film and TV series have done so I will say though to the TV series' credit it did it way better <laughs> and to the film's credit it did it best okay because here it was very much ham-fisted there's a woman in the background who's literally like they're only letting on the wealthy people and it's like I could have seen that we got the visual cues but then she really had to hammer it home and I was like okay we get the point um so yeah there is an exploration of the class divide in this society and you know the fact that only the wealthy are able to gain access to this train which is fine my problem with this whole setup though is that first of all the crowds outside of the train look very diminished <laughs> they're forming an orderly queue there aren't that many people it didn't really feel like it had the same sense of urgency that they were trying to convey through this woman screaming and shouting about how there was you know social injustice taking place here I feel like if they'd had more people and Loki and other Loki <laughs> Sylvie had to like push through like they did at the end of the episode to get to the train I feel like that would have had more impact but instead you just had like a few people queuing up <laughs> patiently relatively patiently to get on this train that they knew they weren't going to get on so I would expect people to be far angrier and then you had these rich people coming up from nowhere and that was my second problem is that you're trying to create a class divide but the whole society looks like it's equally crap like <laughs> the whole society looks like it's crap from every corner I didn't see like a part of the society that looked fancy and wealthy where the wealthy would actually come from or another part of the society that looked desolate and run down and horrible the social inequalities and the wealth gap weren't really conveyed in the overall society in the overall environment that they were in so when we 
we saw these people wearing the, you know, these different kinds of clothes, it didn't really have a lot of weight to it because it's like, where are these rich people coming from? <laughs> the whole planet looks awful. <laughs> the whole planet looks run down. Why are they even on this planet to begin with? So that was my issue with that whole scene on the outside. And then you have, you know, Loki trying to make a plan. He disguises himself as one of the guards in order to get on board. But it turns out that they have to use both of their skills, of course, with parts of his plan and her enchantment in order to get on board without a ticket don't know why they didn't just manifest a ticket like they're they're gods like I, you can't fake a ticket really uh, whatever <laughs> it's fine i believe this series is actually written by writers that have worked on rick and morty i don't know if these writers worked on the train episode from last season of rick and morty but that would be hilarious to me if in actuality they were referencing another series of rick and morty as opposed to snowpiercer <laughs> but there are very clear parallels to snowpiercer like, even when you get into the train you know the way that the train is set up the production design and also the costumes of the people on board are very reminiscent of Bong Joon-ho's film specifically um, as well as you know a little bit of Hunger Games in there <laughs> a little bit of bleached eyebrows to show that you're higher class that's very Hunger Games so yeah you can definitely see this dystopian world inspirations in that sequence and then they hop on the train and once again I find myself surprised at how long we were in this train for <laughs> like I just kept getting more and more surprised by the fact that this episode was going to be taking place on this planet like it was going to be taken at this point like I'm past halfway maybe and I'm like hmm I have a feeling that we're going to be on this planet for the whole episode and I don't know how I feel about it <laughs> I do know how I feel about that I'm slightly disappointed but anyways we have this sequence on the train where once again they're learning more about themselves Loki is trying to claw out some information from Sylvie but she's keeping quite guarded she's able to gain more information out of him because he's quite chatty as a Loki um, and they do get into that topic of you know Loki's childhood and the fact that you know Frigga uh, showed him his powers showed him how to use magic and one of the things that he learned was how to create those fireworks and again like it seems quite trivial in comparison to some of the other things that he does later on in the episode but at the same time it does make sense for that scene it's a very touching reminder of the contribution that his mother made in his life and he still very much has that really close relationship to his mother and his memories of his mother it's clear that <laughs> she was his favorite member of their family um so he does the trick with sylvie and there's a very interesting dynamic between these two I don't know what to do here <laughs> I don't know what to say I don't know what to do because to me the way that they're being set up is like a romantic relationship but I don't know <laughs> I don't know if this show is going to tell me that the only person that Loki can fall in love with is himself I don't know if that's going to be the lesson of the series it would be so ballsy if that was the case like it would I would have to tip my hat off to that I would have to tip my hat off if the only person he can actually fall in love with is himself himself from an alternate reality like okay that's quite clever <laughs> but anyway speaking of the topic of love we do hear later on they're referencing that woman who was you know uh, sitting there in the middle of nowhere who had accepted her fate as the planet was crumbling down around her um and they were talking about how you know she stayed there because she loved her husband according to sylvie and loki was like that wasn't love that was hate and sylvie's like well maybe love and hate are the same thing don't know about that but anyways <laughs> And then they get into the topic of, you know, relationships. Boy talk. They get into boy talk. <laughs> Again, like, I didn't expect that, but this is where we're going. Okay. The only thing that made that whole scene worth it to me, that whole boy talk scene, was Loki finally <laughs> being confirmed canonically, explicitly, as being a bisexual character. Like, Marvel woke up and said, happy Pride Month. Yes. <laughs> I had to replay that scene I was like what did I just hear that was amazing that was absolutely amazing I hope we get to see that play out on screen for realsies and not just said because Marvel has said these things before we've seen them say these things like off camera for example the character of um Valkyrie who unfortunately had a more explicitly um bisexual scene in Thor Ragnarok that would have um kind of referred to her relationship with one of the other Valkyries but that was cut so we ended up hearing Tessa Thompson talk about it but we didn't actually see a lot of evidence on of it on screen and 
and then you have the case of Anthony Russo's character from Endgame who like yeah he mentions that you know he went on a date with another man but it's not the same as Loki it's not the same as like an A-list Marvel character being explicitly confirmed as canonically bisexual but again I do hope we get to see this play out on screen I have a sneaking suspicion that we will not at least not in this season maybe we'll get another season hopefully <laughs> so after that cute little conversation we do see Sylvie get a little bit sleepy a little bit tired it has been a long day <laughs> it's been a long few hundred years or wherever she's jumped off to in terms of time traveling um so she takes a nap on the table which is quite unlike her because she's quite unguarded but I think the idea that is that she's starting to trust Loki a little bit more so she feels comfortable enough to take her nap and also she just might be that exhausted because initially when they get on the train like she says that she's not comfortable with sitting with her back to the door even though the doors are on the sides and then Loki mentions that he's not comfortable sitting backwards in the train which I just want to give a shout out to my mum who's exactly the same <laughs> she does end up taking her nap and then when she wakes up what happens next is very bizarre to me what happens next is quite goofy it's fun okay this I love the character of Loki I'm gonna love whatever scene that he's in I'm gonna eat that <laughs> I'm having the time of my life but I have to call out the goofiness it was a little bit weird to wake up to Loki randomly singing a folk song although to be fair it was I believe an Icelandic or a Norwegian which is of course an homage okay paying due to the uh, culture the Norse culture that birthed the Norse mythology that created his character in the first place which I found to be very fitting but again it was quite random <laughs> it was quite random it's a fun funny scene where Tom Hiddleston is just having the time of his life portraying this character and we do get that lovely reference to the first full film where he says another <laughs> and smashes his glass against uh, the floor so that's a very Asgardian thing to do and that's something that ties him again to that Asgardian heritage that he has and also another show that I couldn't help but remember during that whole singing sequence was The Witcher <laughs> that whole song was giving me very much you know toss a coin to your Witcher vibes which I enjoyed again like don't get me wrong I found it to be very fun it was just a little bit out of character especially considering that this is guys this is the Loki that mere days ago I don't know what the time frame here is but mere somethings ago was trying to take over Midgard do you remember the 2012 Loki <laughs> <laughs> Do you, have you seen the Avengers lately that Loki wasn't this jovial goofy spirit that we're seeing in this series I, I feel like they're playing around a little bit with the characterizations of this version of Loki because whilst I understand they did try to catch him up on the events that took place in the following years of his life that doesn't mean that he experienced those events firsthand and also even that Loki in Thor Ragnarok wasn't quite as goofy as this one is being so I just want to put that out there that the characterizations are taking a little bit of liberties when it comes to this version of Loki that's supposed to have existed mere days ago in the first Avengers film but unfortunately Loki's shenanigans do not go unnoticed they do end up getting chucked off the train Loki first because he's you know being a mischievous and he's not watching his back as much as he should do and Sylvie ends up having to jump after him in order to get that 10 pack because he has it again a bit of goofiness here why does she just take it from <laughs> why does she just take it from him the whole time she's like you have that 10 pack so I have to work with you but like she could just get it off him like she could just I don't know reach into his pockets or something because initially I thought okay I thought that he had put the 10 pack into like an another astral plane like how he magically got a pen and paper <laughs> out of nowhere I thought that that's where he had put the 10 pack but then after he's thrown out of the plane it's quickly revealed that he just had it in like some kind of pocket somewhere because it ends up smashing although I do have a theory about this which we'll talk about in a second it ends up smashing and so it he just had it in like a random pocket like why didn't she just reach out and grab it she didn't even try so she does end up getting really angry towards Loki she has that frustrated scream like this is the worst day ever I was supposed to carry out my plan then he comes along and ruins everything and at this point in time you know the character of Sylvie is very much given me the reluctant female love interest I talked about this trope um in my review of In the Heights but we've seen it time and time again 
I don't know how I feel about these female characters that are just so reluctant to go along with these kind of missions and these kinds of journeys. I always kind of get a little frustrated when I see that it's constantly these female characters that are always the ones that are, you know, like, you're not good enough and you're kind of dragging me behind and they're so reluctant. <laughs> they're so reluctant. They're, they're supposed to be conveyed as like powerful and, you know, focused and, but it does get a little frustrating when you're not even giving me like a, a little bit of a smirk a little bit of a playful side like I, I want to see a bit more balance basically because we've again seen this dynamic so so many times before I just wish the character of female Loki was more like a Loki <laughs> but I will say going back to my theory that I just mentioned uh, this is a very loose theory I don't know how likely it is okay but let's just go with it for a second here I think that it's possible that a lot of these events that took place on this planet may be part of someone's illusion I don't know whose illusion <laughs> a part of me thinks it could be part of Sylvie's illusion because she was trying to find out more information about Loki and there's something about that conversation that took place on the train that very much mirrored the conversation that we saw at the beginning of the episode that took place between Sylvie and Hunter C. 20 so perhaps it's the case where Sylvie did manage to get into Loki's brain and was having that conversation with him in order to pry uh, some information from him perhaps that could be the case and it also perhaps could explain why she was so tired because that energy that she was using in order to get into his stronger brain <laughs> his stronger mind was exhaustive for her so perhaps that could be the case I don't know or maybe it might be the case where Loki managed to take control of Sylvie's mind I don't know how he would be able to do that although I wouldn't really put it past him um but there was just something about her waking up to the scene with Loki singing that felt off to me <laughs> like does anyone else feel the same way it, it felt a bit weird for her to just wake up it, it felt like she was living in a surreal world like it was just an illusion so I think it could be either one possibly I definitely feel like if it was the case where someone was playing tricks or an illusion on someone else it would make this whole episode that felt very much like a filler episode if I'm being honest feel worth it and finally in this last sequence we do see Loki realizing that even though this planet is doomed okay even though the apocalypse is near they could perhaps change the sequence of events by getting on board the Ark and using that energy from the arc in order to power the uh, temp pack that they have and you do get this really cool action sequence as I said earlier I believe it's filmed to look like one take um one long shot but I, I don't believe it to be <laughs> I don't believe it to be one long shot but it is a very compelling sequence but ultimately unfortunately they do not manage to get on board the arc and it in fact is destroyed as it was written <laughs> and so they end up stranded on the planet once again and at that point I was like okay so this was part one of a two-parter I see fine we're gonna stay on this purple planet for a little bit longer uh, some people on the internet have actually pointed out that the purple theme could be a nod to the bisexual flag um if it is the case then you know congrats to the cinematography team congrats to the the writers that's a cute little nod um but if not then the purple was heavy <laughs> the purple was heavy okay i love me some purple but i don't know if i can take two episodes worth of purple scenes on this purple planet but we shall see we shall see what happens in next week's episode I quite frankly have very few predictions other than that they will be facing off with the TVA at some point in time Mobius was very much missed in this week's episode and it's very interesting to me that we find out that everyone used to have an ordinary life before going into the TVA so perhaps that means <laughs> perhaps that means that my wish of seeing Mobius on a jet ski <laughs> will be coming true sometime soon because it's clear to me that his past life involved jet skis in some way shape or form but that's it from me now that I've shared my thoughts on Loki episode 3 it's time for you guys to let me know what you thought of this episode down in the comments below and as I said I will be sharing some of your comments in my next video and we'll go through my thoughts on all of that but please Please be sure to subscribe to my channel to check out new uploads thank you guys so so much for watching i really really appreciate it and i will see you in the next one bye